got a 21 out of 55 on my mock paper three yeah today i'm gonna be doing a math video which is a bit ironic because i am very bad at math but i'm gonna be discussing how i brought up my grades in math over a relatively short period of time as the title suggests bit of a disclaimer before i get into it i did aihl i've planned out tips that you could probably apply to any of the math classes but just keep in mind that ai is more application based as the name suggests applications and interpretation my overall grades or like throughout dp my math grade was usually on average about a five so like i got a few fours a few sixes occasional sevens but mostly it was around like a five six ish level i'm also not amazing at math like i said it's not like my best subject or anything i just got better at it through practice which is really all you need for like ib style math that is my duck for mocks i got a three on paper three but on the other papers i did a bit better like five ish so my overall was at about a four at least as far as i can remember um and then for finals, I was on the lower grade boundary of a seven. So like literally one mark into the seven boundary. I think I got like a 68 or something. Um, so my point is I didn't go from like terribly failing to 100% in two months time. I think that's pretty unrealistic. Although to be fair, if you really just focused on math and like maybe even neglected some of your other subjects, you could probably do that. Um, but obviously like you wanna do well overall, not just like putting all your efforts into one subject. I want to re-emphasize the importance of grade boundaries, which I talked about a bit in my last video, um, but basically just that the grade boundaries that your school uses versus the final IB grade boundaries are often quite different. So the same raw mark that I got in my mock exam, 21 out of 55, would have been a higher grade on the final, so it probably wouldn't have been a 3, it would have been maybe like 4. I don't think it would have been a five but like maybe four um so just keep that in mind that the raw marks you're getting on your mock exams will not really correspond to the same grade on the finals so to start off with how i structured my revision i basically made a spreadsheet with each chapter of the textbook so i just took them out of like i think the contents page of the textbook i was using i was using the oxford one um it's a decent textbook, but like I wouldn't particularly recommend it. I didn't really use many other textbooks and I don't think there were that many good ones for math AI, um, but that's like the one that I used and also the one that my school provided. So I put in all of the chapters on um, each one in one row and then I basically highlighted them in terms of how confident I was on each subject. So obviously green was like easiest going up to like uh, orange which was the hardest i don't think i put any red which there were definitely some here that were red but like be honest and realistic and then each time i would revise the subject i would write in the date and then how well it went so like revision as in like doing something fairly active so like maybe doing some practice questions or like recalling some notes or formulas from memory things like that and then yeah, I would write down each time I practiced it and that way I could keep track of when the most recent time I revised each topic was. Uh, I mostly started doing this like I think after my mock exams, as you can see the dates are like a bit later and I kind of abandoned it like closer to the final exams because like I did start doing past papers as you can see here instead, uh, which is why the dates go from like March to like mid-April. Uh, but of course you could do it over a longer time period. I just like didn't really focus too much on math until then. If you see some like discrepancies here, I'm pretty sure what I did was um, change the color of the actual topic based on like the most recent update or like the most recent time I revised it. So this one was probably yellow at first and then I changed it to green after revising it twice. Um, but yeah, as you can see, like, you don't have to do this perfectly. Like, you can do it perfectly. That would probably help you, but I was, like, not too great with it. But the main point is that this is so that you can get an idea of where you're struggling most. So, like, even after making this, I could see, like, okay, so integration and, like, differential equations were what I was struggling with the most and also a bit of statistics. So when I'm revising, that's where I should put the most time into. And this way, I also knew exactly which chapter of the textbook to refer back to. You could do this with, like, points in the syllabus, which is what I tried to do in the beginning, but 
I found that there's just too much in the syllabus and like it goes into very specific things so I just found it easier to do the textbook way and this way I also knew when I had tutoring for instance um, I knew which topics I could do that week with my tutor this method is from Ali Abdal I think he was the one who created it um, and it's called like retrospective timetable or something like that I'll put a link in the description if you want to read more about the full proper method But this is just like my kind of adaptation of it Another thing I did was have like a main study calendar. So this is like starting in April. I think it went down to May and This included like all of my subjects. So color-coded math was the main one that I focused on So as you can see for math, I split it up very specifically into like different um Topics and I just copied and pasted these from the other sheet that I showed earlier And this way I knew what exactly I would focus on each day and I was able to sort of spread out my revision And also start with the hardest ones of course the main point is to just do a little bit every day and then sort of build that up uh, another thing I want to say is I did it this way because I was quite weak on content from the beginning. If you're already pretty much fine on content, then obviously you want to spend more time doing practice questions and past papers instead, but I wanted to make sure that I covered every point in the textbook because I knew there were things that I wasn't too clear on yet, and also overall I was still- I hadn't revised too much for like the later topics like calculus, so I wanted to get through those before I started doing any past papers. As for the actual process, what I would do is, so for each day, say I was doing 11.4 differential equations, and what I would do is, firstly, I would find that chapter in my textbook, obviously, since I have it written down, 11.4, I'd just go there, and then I would read through it and take notes of any key things to remember, things like formulas or uh, any, like, important reminders. Like, usually the textbook has these, like, little boxes that say, like, important note or like good to remember and I would write those down by hand in my notebook and I also had like a google doc where I had like small reminders or like things I found when I was doing questions but my main notes was in my notebook and I know people say like taking notes is like quite passive but I found that I needed to actually read through and learn the content before I could go and like do any active recall of it but after having my notes I would then go through and do some of the practice questions in the textbook so these are usually things like the worked examples so like I would just go through it step by step maybe reading through the first one based on how they did it and then for the second one I would like try to do it myself just like covering up and like going through each step by myself um, I found that that was helpful because you have the actual worked solution there. Often like the main questions in the textbook are They just show you the answer, but I wanted to see like the steps as well, obviously So I started off with those and then I would move on to revision village, which I'm gonna get into resources later but revision village like highly highly recommend getting this and I would go through like a couple of questions on there based on how confident I was and since I had the notes to refer back to I didn't have to go back to the textbook and then if I maybe really felt like it then I would do like one or two past paper questions on it but again this depends on how difficult the topic was so I had I had differential equations in orange so maybe I wouldn't do as much as if it was like one of the red topics I also had tutoring like all throughout IB and especially during final season so I would sometimes go through the textbook or go through the chapter with my tutor. So that's pretty much how I revised each topic. Um, just staying consistent is an important thing and making sure that you don't fall behind too much. And if you do, then just focus on the difficult things more because some of these really simple topics like, I don't know, coordinate geometry in two and three dimensions or like ways to present data, like they won't really come up by themselves as exam questions, but if you don't know like how to work with like couple differential equations, then that might actually disadvantage you, especially for things that often come up in longer questions like differential equations. So like if it was say a paper two question, then you could lose out on like 15 marks even just by not knowing that. So make sure to focus more on those kinds of topics. If you go through some past papers, then you can usually see like which topics tend to come up a lot and also which topics tend to come up for questions that have the most marks next for sort of exam technique or like past papers stuff like that once you've moved on from content when you start doing past papers a main reason why people recommend past papers especially for math is because the ib tends to sort of reuse questions and if you do many past papers then you'll start to notice some patterns in what they ask or what they look for and for some of the older ones you might even find like the same question just reworded with different numbers so once you do a few of those you'll notice some patterns 
I also did revision village sometimes instead of past papers just because they have like the solution videos and like the step-by-step -step explanation there which the past papers don't have. Revision village is supposed to be very similar to the past papers like obviously to be safe you might want to do the past papers instead but either way just putting into practice what you've learned into actual questions is very very important so you can't just like take notes and then leave it at that like you have to focus more of your time on actually doing questions there's two main ways to go through past papers the first one is to just go through a lot of questions quite quickly and sort of roughly learn the patterns and the general way of doing things um, usually if you've heard of people doing like 10 plus years of past papers they will have gone through it this way like it's unlikely for them to have gone through each question very precisely um, and the second method is to do sort of a few questions or a few past papers overall but really understanding each and every step very thoroughly so that if you were to get another question like that you'd be 100% confident on how to answer it. The way you choose to do it really depends on you. Um, for some subjects I did prefer the first method but for math I really preferred the second way of doing it because I'd rather understand each step than just go through a lot of papers but of course it depends on you. Um, Time limits are also important, so try to time yourself and try to work quickly. Obviously in the exam you are under time constraints, so don't spend too long on each question when you're revising. You can also redo the same questions after a while more quickly. Um, just because you've done a question once doesn't mean like you can't redo it again, uh, especially if you got it wrong, then trying it again after a while and going through it a bit more quickly, trying to solve it more quickly can be helpful. Uh, next for resources. I did a more thorough video on IB resources a while ago So if you want like more detailed exact resources to use you can go check that out But just like a few main ones that I used like I said revision village um, I know it is quite expensive. I don't know how the pricing has changed now I know they've changed a lot of things on the platform, but the main point of why revision village is so good is because it has those detailed solutions and how you get so many questions which you know before ai didn't have too many questions since it's a new course but you get so many questions on it and you get like step-by-step -step solutions there's a solution video for each question but if you can find other resources where you have those kinds of solutions then that also works just as well I was just curious, so I thought I'd check out Revision Village, and they literally have every IB subject imaginable on there now, like, there's, like, English, ESS, business management, economics, like, this is literally the only resource you would ever need, like, assuming the rest of the subjects are, like, at the same quality of math. Also just found out it costs $500. It's $500 per course, um, which is a lot, like, it's currently on sale for, like, 250 at least like the math ones but regardless oh my god that's crazy when i got it i think it was 300 for like all math subjects but i got it for 150 because it was on sale this is actually insane 500 dollars is a lot okay maybe find another resource but no if you can afford it i'd say it's definitely it was good when i was using it and seeing as they've updated it a lot it's probably even better now so I would still suggest it. Past papers, of course, like try to find somewhere to get them. You can often ask your teachers for it, like they will usually share it, especially now, like before exams. Revision Dojo was also really good when I was in IB. I also don't know how they've changed that, but that used to have access to all of the past papers, so you can try that out. And tutoring as well is really important. I feel like tutoring is honestly what really helped me during IB. I had tutoring for math uh, all the way from like beginning like October, November of DP1 until finals and I feel like just having that accountability and like consistency in your revision is really helpful especially if you struggle with motivating yourself because I know like this is something I found quite difficult. If I knew I had two hours of scheduled tutoring each week then I knew I'd be revising math for at least two hours each week which was something I felt like I needed to keep myself on track. Like I said before, Lanterna is a really good one because they have specific IB tutoring from IB graduates uh, or just like any other tutoring platform you can find or even like older students at your school. I'm doing tutoring myself so not for math, for econ, but if you need economics help then send me a message on Instagram if you want to be tutored by me. Next moving on to the actual exam, um, I was very nervous before pretty much all of my exams but especially math because I needed a specific grade in math for my university requirements which I didn't have for any other subjects and my math exams were also like 
I'm pretty sure they were on consecutive days because I had my paper two and paper three right after each other so that was like a good three hours of math exams in one day but during the exam just remember that the feeling you get after the exam is not reflective of the final grade that you'll get like I had so many exams where I came out thinking I did awfully and it didn't turn out that bad uh, again because of the grade boundary is like even if you did objectively score low that could still be a higher grade if everyone else also found it difficult which most likely will be the case if you've revised a lot and you still feel like you found something very hard uh another thing is don't listen to what other people are discussing or saying like i fell into this so much because when you come out of each exam like which you might have experienced if you've already done your mock exams like everyone is just talking about the questions and how they found it and usually it can be very discouraging to hear people say they found it very easy if you struggled with it but just remember that everyone has a different idea of what they consider easy or hard and that may not be exactly the same as yours also just because someone says they found it easy doesn't mean they scored 100 percent on it sometimes people just say that for the sake of it as well so just don't focus on what other people are saying i try to avoid speaking to too many people after the exams and just like minding my own business and going home because i really don't see the point in discussing how it went like i just felt more nervous after it and it just did not really help me especially when i had other exams to think about afterwards but yeah um that's pretty much everything that i have written down but just remember that math is pretty much down to practice and if you practice a lot of questions and you genuinely understand the steps behind them then for sure you will get a good grade because you have space between the exams as well if you if you had paper one first and you found a topic really hard on that then you have a little bit of time before paper two to go and practice that uh, a note on paper three as well like literally everyone finds that one difficult and i feel like no matter how many practices you do for paper three it's always so unpredictable that you could still get a really difficult question but i feel like you'll always kind of get thrown off at least a little bit in some aspect but that's okay because the idea is that you make up for that with other questions that you're more confident in um but overall make sure to focus your vision on like i said before topics that are likely to come up in more long questions i've seen these videos on youtube where people say like um what percentage of questions come from each topic i think for ai like normally as you'd expect like a lot of it is statistics um but there was also quite a bit on like functions i remember and like calculus as well calculus is more for those like long answer like paper two questions but uh it, it does depend on the year as well so don't take this like but yeah, um, that is how I failed my math mocks and still got a 7 in the final exams. This is also why I say don't be discouraged too much by your mocks grades because you can still improve afterwards and I did still get a 7. It was a low 7, like I said, like 68%, but it was still a 7 and I still managed to meet my university requirements and yeah um, good luck with your revision if you are currently revising for IB exams. I remember this was a very long and very exhausting time but it will be over pretty soon in like literally two months so you're almost there if there's any other subjects that you want tips on then leave a comment or any other like ib related topics that you want me to do a video on um i feel like i've covered a lot of ib stuff already but i am planning on doing a more general like overall tips video next and maybe also some more subject specific ones um but yeah that is all i hope you found something useful in this video i'm not gonna lie i've been looking at my duck for like half of the video if not on my laptop